Are your V lookups slowing down your spreadsheet? Let's find out how to fix them on this all new episode of Excel TV. Hi everyone, Jordan Goldmeyer here with Excel TV, Microsoft Excel MVP and author of Dashboards for Excel and Advanced Excel Essentials. Today we're gonna to talk about how you can speed up your spreadsheets with VLOOKUP. So many of you have VLOOKUPs. Here's the thing, those lookups, they can really slow things down. I'm gonna explain to you how you can speed things up and I'm gonna show you why they slow things down so that in the future, you can make faster spreadsheets. Now, before I do anything else, anything, anything else, if you like this type of content, if you wanna get free Excel tips and tricks, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below this video. Do that and then I'll see you in the spreadsheet. Hey everyone, we are now back in the spreadsheet. So let me show you what we have here. I have a database and just so you know, you can actually download this at the end of this uh, at the end of this instruction. So just stay tuned till the end. You'll see down in the description there is a link to the blog post where you can download this. So let's take a look. I have a database here. I have a hundred thousand people on my database, right? So that's a lot. Over here, I have some type of reporting step, and I just want to show you if I hit Control Down, I have about four thousand four hundred fifty people on this. Okay, so let's say I wanted to report the information that's in this database. So I'm gonna just look up here. We have full name, email, gender, IP address, and I'll get to the first letter in a second. That's actually something I use that we're gonna use together to make this faster. But let's say I wanted to report information from here. I have email, uh, IP address, and gender. I'm gonna go over to my report step. I see that these are the items that I wanna report back. So what's the way that we would typically do this, the way that we were taught is to use a VLOOKUP. So I'm just gonna do that right now because I wanna show you how slow this can be. I'm going to take our lookup value. I'm going to go to our database. Here I am not using an Excel table, but you could in yours. But in any case, I'm going to highlight this whole table, A through E, take it all the way down, Control Shift down, F4 to lock it in. And then what is the uh, index, column index number I'm interested in? Well, I'm pulling back email, so I'm going to type in a two here, and I'm just going to put in a false over here to make this an exact lookup. So I have the email. Now, if I wanted to pull back other information, right, what else could I do? So I'm going to hit Control C here. I've copied that, I'm gonna to go to IP address, I'll hit Control V, and then I wanna pull back the fourth column, so I'll hit Enter there, and I'll hit Control V one more time, go up here, we wanna pull back the third column right there. Okay, so here's what I wanna show you. If I were to take this, and I would double click this all the way down, which I'm going to do, let's take a look down here. This is actually going uh, to take a minute, so while it's gonna take a minute, I'm gonna to explain to you what's happening. Whenever you do a VLOOKUP, right, you're doing a type of match. So it's gonna start at the first item, go to the second one, second, third one, fourth one, does it match, does it match, does it match. In computer science, we would say this type of search algorithm is O of N, right? We would, we would talk about this thing called big O notation. We don't need to go into that. But what it's telling us is in its worst case scenario, that's its computational complexity. At its worst case, if you are looking for something in a list, right, it has to go through N amount of items because the item could be at the bottom. So <clears throat> as I'm explaining this, you can see that it's finished up. But what I want to describe to you here is that it's doing that search through 100,000 items. So one VLOOKUP is doing a search through 100,000 items. And it's doing that. And the way you can think about this is how many times it's, is it doing that? Well, we can multiply that by 4,450 some, right? And then we got to do it three more times. So you take that 100,000 items, you take how many times you're doing the search, and then you multiply it by, so you multiply it by the amount of rows you're doing the search in, and then the amount of columns. So you can think of this as really very, 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 um, you, uh, very taxing for Excel. So what can we do about that? How can we make this easier? Well, what we can do is we can give Excel a phone book, right? So rather than looking at uh, the whole list and trying to go through everything in its worst case, we can reduce the size of what it has to look through. So how can we create a phone book to make this easier? Well, the first thing we can do is we sort our data in alphabetical order. That gives it some sense of ordinality. Then what we can do is over here, I've created what I call a lookup table, but it's really a table of contents. So over on this left side, I have A through Z. Over here, I have an index column to make my life easier. So what can I do to tell Excel where to look? So I have the first bits of code over here, but I'm just gonna rewrite it for us here. I'm gonna type in a match. What's our lookup value? Well, I'm gonna look up uh, the letter A, and I'm gonna do it in this first letter column. So before I go on to that, let me just show you how I did this here. So to get the first letter of every item, I typed in left, 
I selected the text, I put in a one in the number of characters, you see that pulls out um, every item. I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape on this because as I hit enter, you can see it's it's taking a while to crank along and that's because we still have this V lookup here that's taxing our spreadsheet. So I'm gonna get rid of that. You see I did left A2, um, one. If I double click that the way down, it automatically calculates, it gets us um, uh, the first letter from every entry in there. So once I have that, I wanna figure out in this sorted list where these first letters start. So in my beginning location, I'm gonna look for column A. I'm gonna look for it with an E2 and E100001. Uh, That's our entire column list. And I'm gonna say zero because we want it to be an exact match, right? So that makes sense. We found it at the first location. If I double click this the way down, you see that we can find it and uh, we find every other letter at its specific location and we see that it ordinarily increases. So that makes sense to us from a data perspective. So if I found the beginning location, how do I find the ending location? Well, that's really easy, right? That's going to be the beginning of the next location minus one. So that gives us our bounds. So I'll double click this the way down. The only thing that it doesn't work for is this last one here because, you know, where does it end? So the easiest way to do this in a list like this is to do a count all, right? So um, how uh, so it would be to do a count all, right? So you could do that on this, you could do it on full name, we're gonna do it on full name. The other way to do this is if you had, I'm gonna lock it in here, if you had uh, an index column on the left side, you could use a max. That's probably actually the better way to do it. But for the sake of example, we're gonna keep it like this. So this tells us our bounds to look in. So instead of doing a B lookup on the entire thing, we're gonna actually construct a dynamic range out of these bounds. So how can we do that? I'm gonna go over to the report step. I'm gonna click on this plus sign over here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is take the information I have over here and I'm gonna report it over here just to make my life easier. You don't really need to do this step, but I think helper columns drive the point home. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a left here and I'm gonna get the first letter of all of these items here. So double click that the way down, see it pulls out the first letter. And now I wanna find out where is it located? Well, we have that table. The easiest way to do that is to actually do another match. And you may be looking at this and thinking to yourself, well, why are we doing another lookup, right? When you said that lookups are slow. So uh, we'll fix that at the end, but just notice that this lookup is not very taxing, right? It's not a very hard lookup for Excel to do. So I'm not saying never to do them, but do them when it makes more sense, when you can reduce that range. So I'm gonna put a false here. That's gonna tell us in this list, we see it's 18. So now that we know it's located at the 18th point, I'm gonna type in an index. In an index, you can actually just um, supply a range as I'm doing, and then you would supply the row or the column you're interested in to pull back the information you're interested in. So you see that we pulled that back right here with 18. I'll close that here. That pulls back the beginning search area, and then I'll hit Control uh, C on this formula here. I'll go to my ending index, and I know just because of the way I st structured this, that the next column is gonna actually supply uh, the ending index. So let's just do that right there. So we see that looks good. I'll double click this the way down and that's gonna supply the letter location. So it's gonna find where that first letter is in our phone book or at least in the table of contents. And then it's gonna look up on those table of contents and say, um, what is the beginning and ending search index? All right, so the next thing we wanna do is create a dynamic range based off of these values. And we're gonna use that into our regular reporting, or we're gonna use that to report out on top of our regular database. So how can we do that? Well, we can still use a VLOOKUP for this. So I'm gonna type in VLOOKUP here. I have my lookup value. What's my table array? Well, typically what I would do is I would select the whole thing. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is actually create a dynamic range from scratch. So how do I do that? Well, instead of typing in the whole range here, I'm gonna type in index, I'm gonna to go to the database, and I'm gonna select this first column here like that. So I'll hit F4 to lock it in. And then for my row number, what I'm interested in is I'm gonna use this right here. This is my beginning search index, right? And then check this out, I'm gonna hit colon right here. Maybe you've never seen this before. And I'm gonna type in another index, and I know that my database is gonna end at D or E. It just depends on what you wanna do. I have my first letter in column E, but maybe because naturally where my database ends, I should put a D in here. So I'm gonna just do um, a D in this case. So here's how we're gonna do this, D2, I'll hit Control Shift down, hit F4 to lock it in. 
and hit comma. And then the next item I'm interested in is this H2 over here. So here's what's going to happen. At, um, at the beginning search index in column A, it's going to pull that out. And the thing, cool thing about index is it doesn't just pull out a value. In Excel's brain, it thinks of it as a cell. So wherever that's located, it's actually going to think of that as the cell. Um, cell address and then it has this colon here and it's going to do the same thing with the other one. So that's going to create a, what we would call a dynamic range. So I'll close that up and then email was in column two so I'll close, uh, I'll put a two here and then I'll type in a false. And I'll hit enter and you see it works perfectly, right? Now here's the thing, before we were doing one call here, one call there, one call there. So again we want to reduce the amount of calls that we're making across columns so the way to do that is to make this into an array formula. So I'll delete that two in there. I'm going to do a curly bracket. We'll go two because that's the email. The next thing we want to pull back is IP address. That's in column four. And finally, the last thing we want to pull back is gender. That's in column three. I'll close that like that. I'll hold shift and select the amount of cell cells, the amount of information I want to return. Once I've done that, I can go into my formula bar, hit a control shift enter, and you see that it pulls all that information with one pass instead of three passes. Now check this out. I have that in there. I'm going to go to this anchor. I'm going to double click. I want to show you, look how fast that was, right? So it took a second to process, but look how much faster that was. So, so much faster. And that's because we've reduced the ranges that VLOOKUP has to look through. Now here's one last thing before I end this off. Over here we have this match, right? So I'm looking at the first letter. I'm pulling it into this list up here. And it works fine, but I don't particularly like how that's working, right? So we're still running a match, right? If it's uh, Z, it still has to go all the way down to the bottom of the list. So I want you to think, if you want to make things faster, how do I reduce that search instruction? How do I turn it, let's say, into one call? Well, we can do that in this case, right? Because even though we have this match here, there's also this Excel function called code, right? So if I select R here and I put in code, that's 82. That's it's actually its ASCII value, right? That's its ASCII value um, within, uh, within the back-end computer, within um, uh, all, these, uh, all these frameworks to understand how these letters are represented as numbers, right? So that's interesting to us because that means that the letters themselves have an inherent ordinality. So if I were just to put in an A here like that, right, we see it starts at 65. So what I can do here is rather than do a match on this, I can go over here, I can type in code, I can select this first letter, but you know, I don't even need to select the first letter because code will actually select the first letter if I do a code of this, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to select the first letter here, and because we know it starts at 65, I'm just going to subtract 64. I'll hit enter all the way down. Now we're not running a match type search. We're actually just finding out exactly what the number is and then using that number to do the lookup. And if I go over here, you see I have this index column. Look how it starts. Code H2, code of A minus 64. That created this inherent pattern of 1 through 26. So that's a way to take your spreadsheet and to make it even faster. Now you may be looking at this and say, I could go even faster than this. And you're right. If you do a formulaic solution, the faster way to do this would be to replace those indexes, or excuse me, those V lookups with an index match. Because uh, some Excel experts have done tests on this, an index match is faster than V lookup. But to get you to the 80% point, to a point where your spreadsheet is just manageable, well, we are here, right? So this is the formulaic way to do it. And then in our next, in a part two of this video, we're going to actually talk about how you might use Power Query to do this. So here's one way. There's an even faster way, um, <clears throat> and you can take a look at it yourself. Now, would you ever use this? Have you ever, uh, could you see using this in your own work? Is it too much trouble? Go ahead, take, write in the comments what you think that you can do and also make sure to check out the video description to get a download file of this if you really like the solution let us know remember excel tv is all over the web find me on linkedin find us on facebook excel tv series find us on youtube go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already and on twitter and um, everywhere else and until you do that until next time everyone i really enjoyed uh, teaching this to you thank you and keep on excelling see you next time